I'm here again to continue from where we stopped the last time. We, the last scripture we read, um, we were able to see the different types of hearts, the four types of hearts that um, Jesus x-rayed for us in the parable of the sower. Now, a lot of people think that the parable of the sower, I used to think so, so I'm not saying this to condemn anyone. Um, because I used to think it was for unbelievers. I used to think that this was a parable for evangelism. When you go for evangelism, you're preaching to unbelievers, some will hear, some will not hear. But no, I have long changed my mind. It's not for unbelievers, it's for everyone. For everyone, and particularly for believers. A parable is a parable of the kingdom of God. Praise God. The teachings are the teachings of the kingdom. Those teachings that will enable a child of God participate in the kingdom of God. Praise God. You know, I, I, I had a chat with a lady once and um, she wanted to get close to me. Um, she had been seeing some of the, my posts and she wanted to get close to me and she requested, you know, for us to pray together to be my prayer partner. And um, she wanted to come and see me, but I made a sentence. So now we were talking and I was sharing the word and everything was good until I made a sentence. I said that, you know, it's not every believer that is the bride of Christ. She said, eh? I said, it's not every believer that is the bride of Christ. And uh, that was the end of that um, um, desire to join me. She was afraid that um, she would enter into a wrong doctrine. Praise God. But I want to say it clearly. I want to say it clearly. And I want to say it without missing words. I want to say it without fear, without intimidation. It is not every believer that will be in the company of the bride of Christ. It is not every believer that will make it to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Whatever our imagination tells us that marriage supper is, it's not a dinner party. It's not a party where we're going to eat grilled chicken and fish and wear bridal gown and dance. No, 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 no. It's something that is a participation in the ruling and the reigning of the kingdom of God in the world to come. Praise God. What did I say it is again? I said it is a participation in the reigning and the ruling of the kingdom of God in the world to come. When we come into the new age, when we come into the new heavens and the new earth, the participation in that kingdom, praise God. Now, we're not teaching in that direction. One of these days, God will grant me grace to come in there and um, would open up one or two things for us so that we can all run with understanding. If you have understanding, you will know how to run the race well. If you're also running the race, the Bible says that anyone who is running for mastery plays by the rules. Unless, if you're going, getting for mastery, perfection, you must do it by the rules. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, um, the Bible of the soul, like I was saying, is for us. It's for God's people. So, I'm, we need to know, you need to know, I need to know, which type of heart do I have? Wayside heart, stony heart, um, funny heart, or fetter heart. We're going to be looking at all of these hearts. But before we do that, I want to deal with, um, I want to deal with a mind, a mind someone would say i'm born again this does not apply to me when i'm born again i am declared righteous i am made holy i am sanctified and i am heaven bound i'm speaking in tongues i'm filled with the holy ghost you are very correct you are born again the bible says that we that have believed have been justified freely from all things and for you to understand your justification and the righteousness which you have received by receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, you know, I need you to go read Romans chapter 6, Romans chapter 7, Romans, no, Romans chapter 4, starting from Romans chapter 4, Romans 4, Romans 5, Romans 6, T 
teaches you very well justification, righteousness by faith, solid ground, a solid foundation. You can never attain righteousness. You can never attain right standing with God by your works. You can never do it by, your, by yourself. You were given the gift of righteousness because you believed in Jesus. The same way Abraham believed in God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. And you received justification by the resurrection of the dead. By the resurrection from the dead of Jesus Christ. When Jesus was raised from the dead, that gave us access to receive justification. What does it mean to be justified? We have been acquitted. We were meant to be bound in hell. But Jesus was raised from the dead on our account. So we're free from the consequences of our sins. We will not be punished in hell for our sins. Praise God. Someone has taken the penalty. And when God goes to your record before you receive Jesus, what is written on your record is justified freely from all things. You are free. You have been acquitted. You're free. You're no longer guilty. So you're a righteous man. Praise God. But there is a gate by which the righteous should enter. David prayed in the book of Psalms, Open unto me that gate which the righteous should enter so that I can enter through that gate. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, why did they worship? Why did they sanctify you? Why did they declare you righteous? Why did they make you holy? Why did they call you holy? What do I mean by holy? Why were you separated unto God? You were separated unto God. You became a holy vessel for God. That is, you are holy, set apart for God. Now, the reason why they separated us, justified us, and sanctified us is so that we can bring forth fruits of righteousness. We can now manifest righteousness. We can come into the nature of God and bear fruits for God. The way we were, we were enemies of God. But now we have become friends of God. We have become children of God. We are now qualified to learn his ways. You could not learn his ways as an unbeliever. As an unbeliever, nobody should tell you don't fornicate. Why? It's your life. A dog will always bark. As an unbeliever, nobody will tell you stop lying. Why? You are a, you are, you are a father is a liar. You are the child of a liar. The Bible says you are like your father, the devil. He lies from the beginning. As long as you are not saved, the devil is your father. Hard mean truth. But that's the truth, my brother, my sister. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I will give you an opportunity to receive Jesus at the end of this session so that you can change fatherhood and you can become a child of God, no longer a child of Satan. Praise God. And no longer will you be at the will, pleasure of Satan. Satan, whenever he desires, he will take you and make you do stuff. He will make you lie. He will make you cheat. He will make you commit fornication. He will make you commit adultery. He will make you dance away your life in nightclubs. He will make you do all kinds of things. You are a captive. When he has finished using you, he will dump you like a wet rag. And then you look at your life. Inside of your heart is misery and fear and depression and anger and frustrations. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, if you have never received Jesus as Lord and Savior, if you have never said yes, I'm not saying if you did not join church. Many people are in churches today. Many, 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 many. Some are even pastors. Some have been ordained deacons. But they've never received Jesus as Lord and Savior. So they look at their lives before they look at their lives now. It is the same thing. It has just been polished. It has, it's wearing a coat. Okay? There's a makeup about it. It has foundation. Max factor. Cover layers of foundation to hide the blemishes. So when they are not where church people are, they show their true, true self. They show what is truly on their inside. Why? They never knew Jesus. They've never met him. He's not their father. They can be corrected. When you begin to teach things that will correct them, they get offended. They get angry. They say, that woman, she's very judgmental. Those people are very judgmental people. Stop judging people. Stop judging people. Why won't you judge people? Why not? The scripture is for judgment. You judge yourself. The Bible says if you judge yourself, no one will judge you. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
So if you've never received Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity now before we continue to receive Jesus so that you can understand what I'm saying and so that you can be able to receive it. Say with me, say, Lord Jesus, today I understand that I need to know you personally. I just joined a church. I just changed from the Orthodox Church to another church. I just moved from one church to another. But I have never really met you as my Lord and as my Savior. Today I ask you, Jesus, come. I want to be your child. Come and make me your child. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. You died on the cross for me. You were raised on the third day for my justification. I believe that you died. I believe that you rose again. And I believe that you died so that you can take away my sins. Please take away my sin, my, the nature of, 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 of the devil inside of me. Take away that nature and give me a brand new nature. Make me your child. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Today I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Today I am truly born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to welcome you to the family of God. Now you are a bona fide child of God. Now you are ready for us to begin to look into the heart. To see the things in the heart that must be what? Taken out. Taken out. That is the preparation of the bride. Taking them out. Things that defy. Things I learned through the years. Things I learned from my home. Things I learned from communication with people. Things I learned from the schools I went to. Things I learned in the company of my friends. Things I learned by way of doing business, how I do business, how I interact with people. Meannesses, wickednesses, foul languages, lies, camouflage, hypocrisies, envies, competition one to another. In the course of my life, I came into those things and they are still inside the heart. Praise God. And sometimes it's so tough, it's hidden. After a while of being a Christian for a while, we find a way of hiding those things. Praise God. But the bride, the virgin, the five virgins, who must enter with the bridegroom, must have the heart clean, purged, having our conscience purged from dead works to serve the living God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, I want us to go a little bit further and a little bit deeper. I want us to look at, yes, I want us to look at, quickly look at, the different faculties of the inner man. What did I say? The different faculties of the inner man. What moves this person called a man? The engine, the workings of an inner man. They comprise of a couple of things. One is the mind. The mind is called nous. I don't know how to pronounce it. In the Greek, it's called nous. Nous or nous. It's the intellectual faculty of a man. Where assessments are done. Where reasoning is done. Now, another part of a man is called the heart. The heart is the word cardia. Cardia is the engine room. The seat of emotions. That's where the conscience is. That's where hatred. That's where love comes from. I hate. I like. You know, desires. That's where they come out from. Praise God. Hallelujah. And it's what is inside our heart that influences the mind. And the mind reasons it out. And the mind, you know, interprets it. Finds a cunning way of how to do things and how to hide the real motives of the heart. Praise God. Now, there's another part of the man also called the spirit, which is called the pneuma. The pneuma is the word wind. It means wind. That's the same word um, translated uh, for the Holy Spirit and the same word for the spirit of a man. That is the real you. If you just got born again when I pray that prayer, that is the one that God saved. That is the one that became you. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and all things have become new. What became new is the new man. In the New Testament, the new man, the new creation man is either called the spirit of the man or the new man is the same being being referred to. Is the is the, in, the, the, the inward man, the new man, not the inward man. The in, inward man is the soul. The inner man of the heart. The hidden man of the heart is the soul. But the, the new man is the spirit of the man. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then, of course, you have the, the other part of the man called the soul. 
which is um, um, in the Greek called suke. Now, the reason I split all of this so that we will know that there's a difference in the operations of these things. And these are all the faculties of a man that must enter into the life of God, that must come and enjoy the life of God, enjoy the peace of God. And when all of these members of a man submit to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the body of a man will enter into righteousness. And then we'll find the scripture that says, if the spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you, that spirit that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken, give life. That's what it means. What kind of life? Zoe, eternal life. Give life to my mortal body. And the mortal body begins to express righteousness, express the life of God, express Zoe, praise God, and then enjoy fellowship with Almighty God. Hallelujah. Um, I want to see you again next time. Please um, be on the lookout and can you take time to you know ex look at not look at, can you take time to investigate these things in the scriptures and be like the Berean women who, after they heard the gospel, they went back to see if these things were truly so.